In this video, we're going to look at one-way analysis of variance. This is a modeling technique which is commonly used in statistics to look at experiments where we've got one variable of interest. So we might be comparing a set of competing treatments against each other and possibly against a control group. To illustrate how we would undertake this analysis using R, we will make use of one of the data sets that is already in R. Now this data set is from an experiment where we're looking at the yield, which is measured as the dry weight of the plants being studied, against the control condition and two competing treatment conditions. So first up we will create our own data frame, plant.df and we'll just take a copy of plant growth which is the data frame already within R which stores the data for this experiment so if we just type plant.df and submit that to the console we'll see that this is how the data is stored as two columns weight and group now the first thing we're going to do is to take the group and rather than having just the labels being CTRL, TRT1 and TRT2 we're going to convert this to a factor with some specific label names that are slightly more meaningful and would make a bit more sense on any graphs that we produce. So what we do is we're going to overwrite that column so plant.df.group will extract that particular column and what we want to overwrite it with is a factor. Now the factor is going to be created using the factor function and by taking the first argument being the data that we want to convert to a factor so we're going to just specify that column, the group column, and then we provide a list of labels, which is a vector of names to associate with the CTRL, TRT1, TRT2. So what we do is we're going to convert them to control, treatment 1, and treatment 2. So this is purely for aesthetic purposes. So first up, we're going to create a box plot to see how the weights vary across those three groups. Now we're going to be using the ggplot2 library to create this graphic. So we do the function require ggplot2 and this as you'll see from the console loads in this particular package. So we make use of the function ggplot. First argument is the name of our data frame plant.df and then we make use of the aesthetics mapping to move from variables of data to particular things that are displayed in the graph. So what we want to do is to specify that on the x-axis we're going to have the three groups, so x equals group specifies that, and y equals weight indicates that the variable weight is going to be used on the vertical column. So then what we want to do is to specify a geom, which is the type of display that's being used, and we want to produce a box plot for that, and we do a few other little controls. So what we are going to put on there is fill equals grey 80, and we'll see what that does when we actually see um, the graph that we created, and colour equals blue. So the fill is the colour that fills up the box and the colour is the outline of the box. There will then be a few other things that we're specifying. So if we put plus because we're going to add something else and move on to the next line. Then we do scale underscore x underscore discrete. So we're explicitly telling ggplot that our x-axis is categorical rather than a continuous variable. Then also what we'll do is add x and y label to the graph and the text that we'll have on the x axis is treatment group as that's the variable we've got on that coordinate and then the y lab is the weight so we put that in as dried weight of plants so we submit that command and we'll drag this over here and you can see the box plot that we've created the aesthetics map to the treatment group to the x axis the dried rate to the y axis and then the fill of the box is the grey that we specified and the blue is the outline. Okay, so we've done an initial analysis that shows us a bit about the relationships between the groups. Now we might want to move on and formally actually test whether the average weight in each of the three groups is significantly different given the data that we've collected. So what we do here is 
rather than just creating the model and printing it to the screen, we'll create the model, save it as an object so that we can use it for subsequent analysis. So we make use of the function lm, which fits a linear model. Analysis of variance model is a special case of the linear model. And the first thing we specify is a formula. So group tilde, sorry, weight tilde group. Weight is our y variable, what we're trying to model, and group is our categorical x variable. Then we put data equals plant.df. This is so LM knows where to look for those two columns of data, which is in the plant.df data frame. Submit that command. And now if we make use of the generic summary function, and we specify the name of the model we're interested in, we get some reasonably standard output that we'd expect to get when we fit a linear model. So we've got a summary of the residuals, a repeat of the function that was called, and then a table of coefficients. We've got the estimate, the standard error of those estimates, the t-values, ratio of the estimate to the standard error, and the associated p-value, which is undertaking a test as to whether or not that estimate is significantly different to zero. Now, as you'll notice, because we've got the control as our base group, it doesn't have a coefficient because the model will be over-specified. So by default, the first group, alphabetically in this case, is used as the baseline. So we're comparing treatment 1 to the control and treatment 2 to the control. And here we see that treatment 1 isn't significantly different on average to the control, whereas there's some evidence that treatment 2 is significantly different. So what we could also then do is create confidence intervals on our parameters if we wanted to look at it from that perspective, making use of the function confint, which takes the estimate, the standard error, and the significance level that we're looking at to construct the confidence interval.